Well, welcome everybody to the Greater Palm Bay Chamber of Commerce Monthly Luncheon. Uh, it is our July luncheon and we are thrilled to have you all join us. My name is Nancy Pelton and I'm President and CEO of the Greater Palm Bay Chamber of Commerce. And today our guest speaker is Dan Ward with Curly and Pin. And uh, so we'll start off with our, our regular um, introduction and things that are going on. I'm going to share my screen. And um, if you have any comments, please write in the chat room and we should be able to keep track of that as well. But uh, let me turn my screen share on now and we will get our uh, from beginning, our lovely, PowerPoint going. Look at that. Okay, so um, I'm going to move my little thing over here so I'm not looking at myself. Yikes. Uh, so once again, welcome everyone to the Greater Palm Bay Chamber of Commerce, our July luncheon. Um, we are just thrilled that you were able to join us today. And thank you for those that were able to um, donate a bit. I know we open it to everybody. And so if you're able to contribute, we appreciate it. We are trying to provide our excellent service and all the events that we normally do just in the virtual realm. Um, but you know, for the chambers too, we are, um, we are a nonprofit, and uh, so renewing and um, and um, you know being able to uh, contribute also helps us. So we thank you all. Um, Oh, there we go. Okay, so usually before I get to the Pledge of Allegiance, I talk about um, fun facts. Uh, this is probably not fun facts right now. We, yesterday, the four chambers of commerce went to the county commissioners because they have $40, 40 million in CARES Act funds to distribute to small businesses. And the chambers have been working together. We are all advocating on behalf of the business community to ensure that that you know they consider the people that didn't receive any funds um, you know how quickly people went through funds and that they really need a grant and not another uh, loan so we were there to advocate on behalf of that as well as the chambers because the chambers were our 501 c6s and didn't qualify for um, any of the loans and grants. So I wanted to do a shout out to, uh, first of all, our um, chairwoman, Tracy Strotter. She did a fabulous job and we did share that on our Facebook page. So if you did not get a chance to see what Tracy spoke about, uh, that was on there. Beverly Squires Wiggins did a fabulous job. Adam Copenhaver, uh, Geraldine Blanchard was there. And kudos to Geraldine because there she was speaking in front of the county commissioners. And at the very end, she did, as you all know and love her, her tagline, she said, uh, without a travel agent, you're on your own. So we all had to clap for that one because she didn't miss the opportunity to advertise her business, what she did and, and provide her tagline. And finally, Stuart Borton with Yellow Dog Cafe um, also spoke on behalf of the chamber. So there are a few more that came, but unfortunately, uh, they were also discussing the ordinance with masks wearing, uh, and that took about four hours. So uh, a lot of people had to leave by the time that was discussed. Um, unfortunately, too, looking at the, the numbers, you know, last month I wrote for June, at that time, we had 424 cases. We are now up to, as of yesterday, 1,716. It's like a 400% increase here in Brevard County. Our average daily cases um, was at 4.1, um, and um, it had unchanged. Now we're at 822. It's like a 200% increase. And the positive cases back then, the weekly percent of positive cases was at 0.8%. We're now at 8.49. That's like a thousand percent increase. So we have that daily dashboard on our chamber website. If you go to the Greater Palm Bay Chamber um, and wait for the screenshot to go through that says COVID-19, you can click on that and every single day it updates with the Brevard County numbers so that you can keep track. I think we all know that they have gone up and that obviously is a concern. So continuing to social distance and um, wear your mask when you're um, you know, out in the crowds and 
even in restaurants, uh, you know, it's just a, a safe thing for you and others. So that is my little uh, pitch for today. But um, hopefully next month when we give an update, it's um, we're going to see some numbers going down. I think we all were concerned when we had about 150,000 come in from the astronauts being launched into space uh, for the first time since what was that 2011 so that was pretty exciting uh, but you know now we're we're seeing numbers go up so be safe everybody um, and now we'll do our pledge of allegiance um, if I stand um, you'll not see my head and that will look weird so we are just going to do our pledge if you want to do it um, in your seat that will be swell um, and so we will start with I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So thank you for that. We are trying to fast forward here. My computer is slow. Oh, there we go. Okay. So for those of you that don't know, um, please check in. Now you don't have to pay as much attention. So grab your phones, um, check in, and uh, you can go to the event, the luncheon event, and you can share on Facebook and uh, on our chamber page. So that's great. I want to give a shout out to the board of directors because seriously, I mean, Tracy Stroddard, our chairwoman, has been nothing but fantastic. It's her second year doing this, so that's another kudos because most chair uh, people only last a year or only want to do it a year. It's a very demanding job, but she's just been awesome. Uh, we also have Adam Copenhaver from Linkio, Alfreda Wooten with Florida Power and Light, Beverly Wiggins with Home Instead Senior Care, Chelsea Camaro, Five Star Claims Adjusting, David Alpazar, Alpazar Law, David Pett, Health First Health Plans, Dominic Paz, Morse Communications, Amy Wendell, Aloha Maintenance, George Galetko, Waste Management, Holly Tanner, LH Tanner Construction, Jessica Moore, 142 Productions, Keith G., uh, with Bridges, Rob Salonen, Florida Tech, Sarah Levante, EDC, Economic Development Commission, Shelley Coons, ASAP Pass Solutions. We also have our ambassadors and um, we have Deb Jansen with LF Staffing and Ginger Aiello BRG Air Systems are our co-chairs, Diane Bryson with True Choice Technologies, Greg Quinones um, is a fabulous member. We have Heather Casbaro, a Mother's Touch Movers, Janice Fox, Spotlight Magazine, Jennifer Helen, Seniors Helping Seniors, Jennifer Valier, Thrivent Financial, Joe Rowlett, Florida Health, Mark Gallegos, Quan G, and Tara Linnell, um, Tara's Animal Care. So we want to thank our trustees. They are the supporters that are at a higher level of um, investment. So we certainly appreciate them. Because of their financial contributions, we are able to support our smaller businesses. So uh, we will really truly want to thank our Emerald Trustee, the City of Palm Bay. We have our Gold Trustees, Waste Management, Health First, and Palm Bay Air and Heat. Our Silver Trustee Partners, West Melbourne, Florida Tech, Florida Power and Light, L3 Harris, BRG Air Systems, and Riverview Senior Resort. We have a new Bronze Trustee, PRC Property Renovations and Construction. Uh, they are sponsoring our um, Disaster Recovery Expo Week. So we are just thrilled to have them as our newest trustee to join and step up to be a trustee. As you can see, we have a lot of bronze trustees with Sam's Club, JAG Financial. We have Brass Pro Shops, Print Depot, Edward Jones with Kevin Chancellor, Yellow Dog, ASAP Pass Solutions, Brevard Public Schools, The Pie Program, LH Tanner, Construction, Adams Home, Michael Gregg, Home to uh, Suites and Hyatt Place, Linkio, Publix, Promise and Brevard, Sandy Mickelson, Victoria Landing, Buena Vida Estates, TD Bank, Orlando Melbourne Regional Airport. We have the Florida Healthcare Plans, Morsecom, Tank Wizards, and once again, our newest trustee, PRC Property Renovations and Construction. So thank you to all our trustee partners. We also have our media partners, so Digital Inc., uh, EverythingBrevard.com, Hometown News, Saving Safari, 142 Productions, Space Coast Magazine, Senior Scene, Vieira Voice, and Brevard Business News. Um, we still have going on our um, 
referral program. So if you provide a lead, uh, which turns into a business joining the chamber, you receive $25 in chamber dollars or chamber bucks. Uh, you can use them for um, any of our event towards your membership, uh, whatever, you know, the chamber, if we charge for any event or, or any program, if you sponsorship, if you want to use it towards that. Uh, so we appreciate your referrals. And thank you so much for that. We have new members though, um, and renewals, and we want to acknowledge them because we know it's been difficult. And everybody that renewed in full gets uh, two weeks free on our digital sign out there. So we know the traffic has started to increase from the Department of Transportation. They said 25,000 cars a day go past our sign on US-1. So uh, great free advertising that you get for renewing your membership in full. For those of you that um, are having a, a challenge and can want to continue with um, the great benefits of the chamber, we have a monthly payment plan or quarterly, so we are here to really work with everybody. Um, renewals, though, have to be in by um, July the 10th, that'll be on another slide um, in order to um, be included in our guide. But as you can see here, all the new and renewals with Aging Matters, Brevard Public Schools, everythingbrevard.com, ITG Realty, our new member, uh, Julia, Royal Hands That Care, Launch Federal Credit Union, Marine Bank, uh, Paul Davis Restoration. We have somebody scribbling through the screen. I could be me. Um, predator services, property renovations and construction and rent insurance agency. I have no idea why it's coloring on there, but anyway, we don't want to cross out our members. I don't know what that's doing, but uh, moving along, um, there's the chamber box. So uh, like I mentioned, any referral, we certainly appreciate and uh, you can get your $25 in chamber bucks. Uh, our award sponsor is Florida Tech Continuing Education. We are getting them on um, for next month. They still have their continuing education. They aren't doing things in person, so I think that uh, their ropes course might still be open. Uh, often they'll open that up on the weekends. I don't know because the cases have gone up if they've um, kind of closed things back again, but we will continue to keep you updated. And we certainly appreciate Florida Tech's um, support and, and monthly sponsorship. So thank you to Florida Tech. We also have um, our Business of the Month sponsored by Community Credit Union, and it's been kind of weird so we have to figure this out you know it, it just doesn't seem fair to not give the business of the month award in person to somebody so that they get all the recognition and all the photos and so we're going to have to figure out um, how we can recognize our businesses and uh, certainly uh, recognize community credit union for their sponsorship and support uh, we certainly appreciate them um, you know sponsoring our chamber well, it looks like that scribbles on my screen. I didn't know what happened. Um, it doesn't seem to be going away. So yeah, you gotta love technology. Okay, well, so up upcoming events. Uh, I just go with the flow. Um, it's July 3rd, uh, we're, we won't be here Friday, of course. Everybody knows July 4th is our Independence Day. So we will be closed here at the office on Friday. Uh, for those of you that don't know, we have been in um, here. There's only two of us, so we're able to social distance. We do require if you do come in that you come in with a mask, uh, that you do social distance, and we only allow two in at a time. So uh, we've been able to um, keep everything clean and and sanitary and um, we have masks if you do come in and don't have one um, so coming up if you want to get these on your calendars there's the power partners leads group if you've never checked out one of our leads groups uh, they're still going to be virtual so that's july 6th and 20th and that's the group from 12 to 1 and then on july 7th and 21st it's our early risers leads group so uh you can join those there are eight to nine o'clock so they're early they're making you get up early uh we're starting a wellness walk it's almost just a meetup it's not something you have to register but we'll have uh, water there and i'm looking at getting the pedometers from vtas they were our sponsor for our um 
our lifestyle health and wellness that we were supposed to have in March that didn't happen. So they have a boatload of uh, pedometers that they want to give out. So we would like to, um, you know, be fit, be able to network and going through Turkey Creek, it's very shaded. I know it's very hot out there, uh, but we're kind of concerned and want everybody to be healthy as well. Cause I know it's just easy to uh, take a break and go to the refrigerator guilty. So, um, we are are going to be outside it's about a 45 minute maybe walk if we do all the kind of outside loops and trails there's spots when where you can kind of get a little bit together and then um whoever you're walking with we can rotate so you can kind of network that way and like i said be able to social distance so if it's raining we're looking at five to six to do this if it's raining we're looking at thursday july the 8th or 9th so well you know the weather it's florida so if it's um you know we'll be posting on facebook so check on our facebook page and then disaster recovery week is july 20th to 24th it's going to be at 10 o'clock every morning and um, you can uh, log on and see it we'll have a, a virtual swag bag so information will be included in that swag bag you'll be able to download so it's kind of cool and uh, we have another multi multicultural virtual happy hour last time um we were talking a lot and we, I don't think we got to sing as much. Did anyone, I don't know if they were singing and playing as much music this time. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to, um, if things are open, we might be able to not have it virtually, but it looks like um, that's probably not going to happen. So we've got it planned for virtual. So add those onto your calendar. You know, they're going to be on our website and um, you'll be able to, um, you know, just get all the information and sign up there. We also have a contest going on because we did back to business uh, celebration and it turned out to be more than a week. We did 21 videos. So if you are, if you'd like to watch them, um, share them, sign on, um, we are having the contest for the most views. So whoever gets the most views, um, and I might even do the most reach because it seems like sometimes the most views doesn't necessarily mean the largest reach. Um, we're going to give them two weeks free on our digital sign. So uh, share, help them with their search engine optimization because we want to um, really help support the businesses. It was great. If you missed it, um, it really was terrific reach. We are still doing it, but now we are charging uh, $50. I'll come out to your business as long as it's not, um, you know, an hour away and we'll do the film um, we'll do the live stream and you can post it on your facebook page we the minimum views i think we had on any of these is about 600 and something the reaches have been um you know about 1300 so it's really more than what you would get at any of our events so it's been great exposure so if you're interested reach out to us and we'll come out um, and see you we're very excited. Our August luncheon keynote speaker is Dr. Mark Mullins. I know um, Deborah Foley will be thrilled because I sure everybody asks her every single day, what's going on with Brevard Public Schools? So he'll provide an update of what they've decided. They have a, uh, I think it's July 14th, they're having um, a school board meeting and looking at what's gonna happen for the new school year. So uh, join us next month. You know, it's always the first Wednesday of every month. So August the 5th. And then this is our disaster recovery week. So it's July 20th to 24th from 10 to 11. And not all of them are going to be an hour. Some might be a little more, some a little less, but great information. It is just not on hurricanes. We're talking about a checklist for you. So you're checking your own business. We're talking about um, cyber and like not just in-depth cyber security, but now we're having to go back, I think, and work remotely again. Um, your home might not be as secure as your office. So um, all the things that you have to do. So every day it's a different topic. We're talking about insurance. We're talking about mitigation um, and recovery. So it'll be a great week of topics. Once again, the business director and community guide, we are actually have been going through, we are giving you two more weeks. So July 10th, uh, people that have not renewed by that date will unfortunately be dropped from um, the guide. So if you have not, um, if you're not current, um, you can call us or we'll be reaching out to everybody. So, um, and if you renew in full, you get that free week on the sign. So 
you're able to advertise if you want um, on our digital sign. Once again, I'm looking at all the traffic outside there. US1 is crazy. So it's a great opportunity for you to be able to get your logo out there, information out on that digital sign. We also have other opportunities. So the first one is our video, video um, that we will come and do, like I mentioned, for $50. We also have our chamber chats when we come up with those. An e-blast, if you just want your information sent on your, your own to our constant contact people, a uh, great way to do that. We have Facebook posts that we blast out there um, and social media packets. We also have our um, Intel sponsorship. So, so check that out, Carolina can go over all of those with you if you have never downloaded our member plus app if you now that you're at your house it is the perfect way to be able to you just click on it um, this is the app and what you're able to do is see all the businesses our event calendar is there so if you want to uh, click on the business directory okay the first one one for two productions um, it gives you maps and directions you're able to email you're able to phone you go to the website everything is there I know you guys call us and we love you calling in but it's all at the tip of your fingers so download the app that's um, the best way to be able to see all the members okay now that I've been yabbling on forever, we decided to um, do everything at the front end so that at the end, we'll just wish you all um, a happy 4th of July and um, you know, wish you well. Uh, we wanted to, um, like I said, go get through all the housekeeping really first. And for those of you just joining us now, you have joined the Greater Palm Bay Chamber of Commerce with our monthly luncheon. My name is Nancy Pelton and I'm president and CEO. And I'm very thrilled to introduce Dan Ward, the president of Curly and Pin. Um, he is uh, the le leading a team of talented professionals providing advice and counsel to a wide range of clients and offering experience in issues management, strategic communications, publicity, and community relations. And he's an accredited member of the Florida Public Relations Association and the Orlando chapter named him the 2013 professional, PR Professional of the Year for Career Excellence. Uh, also, uh, Public Relations Society of America, for which he served as the president of the Orlando Regional Chapter in 2004. And he has practiced public relations in Florida for over 25 years. He has the FPRA's highest designation as a certified public relations counselor in 2014. He's been with Curly and Pin since 1995 and directs the firm's strategic communications and marketing programs and the teams that implement them. He supervises the programs for clients in the electric utility, higher education, economic development, restaurant, and travel industries. He's also a proud graduate of the University of Central Florida where he earned a Bachelor of Arts with honors in journalism in 1992. He remains actively involved with the university serving on the advisory board for the Nicholson School of Communication, which inducted him into its Hall of Fame in 2011. He's also chair of the UCF Alumni Association. He lives here in Florida with his wife, uh, Ray, and they have two children, Megan and McKenna. So without further ado, I will now give you Dan Ward, who will um, provide our fabulous presentation of now that uh, the economy is kind of reopening, how do you continue or start marketing your business? So thank you, Dan. Hey, thank you, Nancy. Appreciate it and uh, honored to be with everyone today. And uh, hopefully it will be a fabulous presentation. <laughs> appreciate you setting the, uh, the stage for that. Uh, there are probably some names and faces on the list that uh, you may not recognize. I think about half of our team is on the call today, no doubt uh, trying to watch for any mistakes I might make so they can bring that up in our next staff meeting. Uh, so hopefully I'll, I'll do well today. Uh, just some brief background, as Nancy uh, mentioned, um, owner and president of Curly and Penn Public Relations, and I've been with the firm for 25 of our 36 years. Uh, during that time, had the honor of working with some great brands, uh, one of whom I've, I've heard mentioned a few times today. We've uh, had the, the, the honor of working with Florida Power and Light for about the last 10 or 12 years. Uh, also worked very closely with Universal Orlando Resort, uh, University of Central Florida, and many others. Uh, I also know Palm Bay fairly well. My brother-in-law 
has lived in Palm Bay for about the last 25 years. He works at SeaDo, and uh, my wife grew up in Brevard County in Cocoa, so uh, we try to get back uh, whenever we can. Uh, our firm follows five basic principles in everything that we do, and, and the first of those is focus on what keeps the client awake at night. And right now that begins and ends with COVID-19 and the impact that that is having on everybody's business. And that's kind of what we're gonna focus on today from a marketing perspective. Um, you know, the economy has reopened, which is great. But as Nancy mentioned, we're also seeing numbers uh, rise very quickly right now. And everybody's obviously pretty nervous. So from a marketing and communications perspective, what does that mean for those of us who own and run businesses? So I am going to go ahead and see if I can share my screen now. And see if I can get that to work. And we are going to move into a presentation. Nancy, do you see the, uh, the PowerPoint up there? Okay, terrific. Yep, you're good. All righty. So we will just uh, move right in. Uh, just a little bit of additional background. If you visit our, our website, which is the, the strategicfirm.com, you'll notice a lot of archery imagery. And uh, the reason for that is it illustrates the importance of targeted communication, uh, which is really important to us. And uh, we try to live by the spirit of that quote that you see on the, the screen. In a time of crisis like we're in right now, uh, the target often moves, and we also are left with a lot fewer arrows in our quiver. So from a marketing perspective, it's really important for us to learn to adapt uh, and change and update the way that we reach out to our customers. Um, I mentioned uh, as well that uh, we've had the great opportunity to work with some well-known brands, We've also dealt with a number of crises, uh, certainly not anything as long lasting as what we're in now, uh, but we've dealt with some crises that have threatened the very existence of our client organizations. So imagine you're the operator of a, uh, uh, one of Orlando's most successful resort uh, communities and then 9-11 happens. Uh, or you're a collection of upscale beach communities on the northwest Gulf Coast of Florida and Deepwater Horizon starts sending millions of barrels of oil toward your beaches. Um, in both cases, travel was nearly shut down. Uh, we all lived in a climate of fear and we all lived in a 24-hour news cycle um, where every news story reminded us constantly of why we needed to be afraid. Does that sound familiar to everyone? I think it uh, probably does. Um, but also in those cases, the, the clients that we worked with and, and many others responded, they recovered and they thrived. And they did that by listening to their customers and by displaying a willingness to, to change and innovate. And all of us as business owners need to do the same thing now. Uh, Nancy ran through some of the, the numbers that we saw, so I, I won't necessarily do that, but uh, I know that we've all seen the, the governor's recommendations and we're currently in phase two of reopening. There have been some scaling back when it comes to some of the bars. Um, the question now is what changes might be coming, certainly at the local level, um, and how might local governments react with their own measures. I, I serve currently on the Orange County Economic Recovery Task Force, and the numbers we've seen here have certainly been very frightening. Masks here are mandatory, so uh, Nancy mentioned that in Brevard County that was voted down. Um, here in Orange County, our mayor uh, passed an executive, or wrote an executive order a week ago to make those mandatory, but with no enforcement mechanism, it's left to businesses to be the enforcement. And unfortunately right now, not very many are doing so. Uh, we've seen many restaurants and bars that are not enforcing social distancing or mask rules. And contact tracing, at least here in Orange County, is showing hundreds of cases that have been tied to that. So retail businesses are learning very quickly that if they don't enforce the rules and their employees or customers get sick, uh, they're forced to close. Um, and I think that's starting to change the mindset for a lot of businesses 
Um, you know, following the rules may limit revenue, but not following the rules could eliminate revenue. So as business owners, we need to decide which one we would prefer. Um, for many service-oriented businesses like law firms or accountants or PR firms like mine, uh, the guidance is a little less clear, uh, and that's making for some muddled decision making. Um, do you have shifts? You know, do you wear a mask at your desk? Do you not? Uh, what do you do, what do you do if somebody has cold or flu symptoms? Um, we're making a lot of decisions just based on gut uh, feeling, and so because of that, there's there's a little less consistency maybe. I uh, mentioned before listening to customers. Uh, here in Orange County, the county conducted a research study um, about a month ago that shows what businesses are up against. Now this was Orange County, but I would, I would uh, say that it's probably fairly safe to say that the numbers are uh, fairly similar in Brevard County as well. Um, keep in mind these numbers come from a survey that was conducted while the numbers were still fairly low. The case numbers were fairly low. Now they're on the rise, so some of this may change. Um, but that top note is very important. Uh, part of what we're seeing is that people believe that they and their families are following the rules and doing the right thing, but they are concerned that businesses are not. And they're trying to decide whether to dine, whether to go out and shop. And they're trying to make those decisions based on whether they think the businesses are doing everything to keep them safe. So from a business perspective and a marketing perspective, it's not anymore just about selling our products and services and telling people what products and services we provide and why they are the best products and services. It's also about telling our customers what role we're going to play in keeping them safe. Um, so given that, what are some of the things that businesses should keep in mind uh, when it comes to marketing their brands and encouraging customers to return? Uh, we're going to walk through nine different uh, areas today, nine different things to consider. And then uh, when we get to the, to the end, hopefully we'll have some time for some questions as well. First and foremost, uh, employees always come first. Um, this is true in any era. Uh, regardless of whether you're in a crisis, employees are always your most important audience. And, and right now, um, what's important for them to know is to, to have reassurance from you as, as the business owner, business leader, that recovery is on the way. Uh, those of you who have been in business for more than 10 years lived through the last recession. Those of you who have been in business for more than 20 years lived through 9-11 and the economic disruption that that caused, uh, the bottom line is you made it through um, and you're going to do so again and your employees need to know that. Uh, you need to communicate to them uh, their importance to the company's future uh, and that you plan to make it through for them and because of them. Uh, so if you've already stepped up your communication internally, uh, during this crisis, keep up the pace. If you have not yet stepped up communication, then you need to step up the pace. And you know, the question may be, well, what does this have to do with marketing? Um, your employees are your spokespeople and they are your front line to your customers. And if they don't feel confident in your ability as a business to get through this, your customers aren't going to have that confidence either. So it needs to start with them. Um, it's also important to demonstrate to your customers and to your team um, the importance that health of your team comes uh, and, and how important that is. We're seeing now restaurants and businesses close temporarily when their employees test positive or are exposed. Uh, certainly that hurts the bottom line for the short term, but it also demonstrates leadership and compassion. And that's what customers want right now. Uh, when they're choosing who to purchase from, uh, when, they're, when they're choosing whether to engage with you. I'm personally a big proponent of face coverings um, because the science shows that it works. And if I'm shopping in Palm Bay, uh, I am probably going to be looking for um, some evidence that the businesses there 
are practicing good social distancing, enforcing mask rules. If not, I'm probably going to walk past. Um, you know, and, and with Rivard County deciding not to pass uh, a mask ordinance, uh, as a consumer, that influences my decisions. Um, so I think from the marketing perspective, making sure that you're focused on your employees and communicating to your customers that you're taking the health and safety of your employees as a priority is a marketing decision and it's part of what helps uh, people make the decision to engage and shop with you. Uh, certainly when, when it comes to some of the numbers that we're seeing, uh, I think Nancy mentioned disaster recovery week. Um, part of what is important right now is identifying all of the potential scenarios that your company might encounter in the next few months. Um, you know, at one point we were talking about a full recovery by this summer, um, but uh, the virus clearly had other plans. Um, some are now predicting a second wave in the fall coinciding with flu season. Um, what is the business plan for you in each scenario? And what, what is your marketing and communications plan? Um, you know, if any scenario of a business closure, how are you going to communicate with your employees and your clients? If numbers begin to flatten or drop, how is that going to change your marketing spend and where you market your company? Uh, if there are closures due to a spike of cases, how are you gonna respond operationally and how does that impact how you communicate um, whether that's through social media or any other channel. Um, if you choose to close or if you're forced to close, how are you going to get that message out? The time to plan for that is now because if any of those what if scenarios occurs, you'll be expected to make decisions and communicate immediately. And you're not going to have time to plan at that point. And if you haven't done your planning, that's when mistakes happen. And as we've seen uh, on social media, uh, people are going to hold your feet to the fire. And if you make mistakes, they're gonna call you out for it. So you need to spend the time now to do that what if scenario planning. Uh, invest in research. Uh, sometimes this can be difficult, especially when we're in a crisis and in, you know, uh, revenues are, are falling. Um, but at the same time, your customers' needs, I guarantee you have changed. Uh, what motivates them to purchase has changed. Um, and it's important for us not to guess at what marketing messages may connect with them uh, and what methods may work. Uh, instead, we need to test what those messaging uh, strategies may be that will give customers the confidence to leave their homes and enter our businesses. Um, you know, I mentioned that county research earlier that has now led to a marketing campaign here in Orange County um, that just launched on Friday that is uh, all built around do your part. And it's imploring businesses and citizens to do their part in keeping their community safe uh, so that people will have the confidence to go out and shop and dine again. That was based on the research um, to find out what customers wanted. The research doesn't always have to be expensive. Uh, it can be something that you can do working in partnership with others uh, to do omnibus surveys and things like that. And sometimes you can also just research secondary uh, findings. You know, I, I would encourage you to look at the research that Orange County did and look at some of the things that consumers are saying there. Um, there may be things that others in the business community have done that you can uh, look at rather than having to make that investment upfront yourself. But it can really be critical. I, you know, we'll talk in a little bit about a crisis we manage where the research was absolutely 100% critical uh, to success um, because it told us not only what the damage would be if we didn't make changes to our marketing plan, but it also directed us to what our customers were demanding from us and what changes we needed to make. It really led to the messaging and the strategy. Um, if, if you're anything like me right now, your email box is extremely cluttered um, with company messages, updates, offers uh, that started when the economy started to open back up again, and it is surging now. Um, but the question is, how many of those messages are landing? 
because there's a lot of clutter right now and which ones are breaking through that. Um, yours is not the only company that is hoping to rebound. Every company is hoping to rebound right now and we're all communicating with the same audience and that audience is a smaller audience now because of the folks who are just unwilling to go out and, and shop. Um, so whatever plan you may have in place right now, um, now is the time to get whatever creative team that you have um, to take a planning day and go off to brainstorm new approaches. Uh, it can be very hard to do, I know, because nobody is taking time off right now and you're just worried about the day-to-day -day and keeping the doors open in a lot of cases, but you really need to take the time to break away from the day-to-day -day and do the brainstorming now on uh, what are some of the me methods and messages uh, that we need to use to get our message across? What are the methods that we need to use and what are some of the things that maybe we need to do differently um, because it's not just a straight sales message anymore. It is also a message about compassion. It is a message about what we're doing as businesses to do the right thing and support our community. Um, so need to take the time to think through some of those things so that you can break through all of that clutter that's out there. Um, again, going back. So for us, we're focused right now a lot on social media and introducing members of our work family. Family is a very important part of our culture. So for us, it's about communicating that family culture and we want people to know what that means for us. Um, for the, uh, you know, part of it also goes to thought leadership opportunities and looking at how we can be more involved in our community. Um, I mentioned the, the Economic Recovery Task Force, and that also led to service on an advisory committee that helped to develop that marketing campaign that la launched last week. That didn't just happen by accident. That happened because our team was looking at ways to establish us as thought leaders, and it happened because I raised my hand and volunteered and said, how can I help? Um, and that led to opportunities for our company. So. Um, you know, you, you need to look for some of those ways to, to break through the clutter and do new things. Um, you can't just spend your way out of it. You need to look for creative uh, messaging and strategies. Price competition is another thing to keep in mind. Uh, many of the people who are now out of work will not return. Um, and instead, many of them are going to transition to contract work or open up their own businesses. We're seeing that in our industry, in public relations. There are a number of people who are um, taking this time, you know, they, they've lost their jobs and they are doing contract work now. And they have less overhead and they have a greater focus on building their book of business, um, less focus on making a profit, which means they're better able to compete on price. Um, so, you know, great, Dan, I'm, I'm operating at limited, limited capacity right now. Many of my clients have cut their spending, so you're asking me to cut my price. That's not the message that I'm trying to send. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean cutting price. It means preparing for more competition on price. Um, in a, a recent webinar, a sales expert, Brian Kavicki, uh, advised, don't devalue your offerings. Instead, find ways to make the decision to work with you more comfortable. Um, you know, I mentioned that hotel that we worked with uh, after 9-11 hit, and while others in the hotel industry were cutting their rates to try to encourage more people to visit with them, they kept their rates steady, and instead they focused on value. What new services could they provide to their customers um, to bring them through the doors, and they had nearly 100% occupancy. So it's not always about cutting uh, price. Um, we traditionally, our company for the last 36 years, we work with larger corporate clients um, that can afford to have a team that manages a turnkey PR program. But in the wake of this crisis, one of the things that we're looking at right now is price competition and pricing strategy and not necessarily cutting our rates, but looking at how we can provide value to smaller clients. What are the ways that we can adapt our teams 
uh, to provide value to smaller clients who may have less money to spend with us right now, but have the potential to grow with us later. So that's part of how we're looking at doing that. From the media perspective, uh, notice a listing of a number of the media partners that you have in the chamber. Um, journalists have new and expanded beats and coronavirus obviously uh, is at the top of pretty much everybody to-do list right now. But one of the things that we're also seeing is that the journalists with whom we, months, we once have worked may no longer be in the same position. Uh, there have been furloughs, there have been layoffs, there have been uh, folks who are journalists who have decided to pursue other careers. Um, and it's important for us to start over and research those of us, those who are going to cover our businesses moving forward. Uh, and, and as part of that, realize that many of the journalists who are going to cover your industry are going to be a lot younger, they're going to be less experienced, and they're gonna be more focused on visuals and quick hit storytelling. Um, so in terms of the stories that you tell through marketing and communications, you need to think more visually and you need to think uh, in terms of telling very quick uh, stories as well. Um, and it's also important to realize that while reopening the economy is very important to you and while your business is the most important thing to you, it is not the most important thing to the reporters who may cover you. Uh, they have a thousand other businesses that they're covering. So right now it's more about how can you tie your business to stories of economic recovery? How can you tie your business to stories about doing the right thing, about having compassion for uh, employees and for others in the community um, for being part of the overall economic recovery of the region and uh, being part of assisting those who have been impacted uh, by this crisis. Um, how can you become involved in helping? Um, and then the other part of it is how can you help journalists generate clicks? Uh, it's, it's sad to say that that's a big part of what generates uh, news coverage now, but uh, thinking through uh, lists, um, thinking through uh, headlines and terminology um, that may be a little uh, provocative uh, is part of what drives clicks and that's part of what drives journalism today. Um, so those are some of the things that we need to keep in mind when we're developing our media strategy. And I mentioned communicating visually uh, as part of that. Um, when we were working with South Walton in uh, the Gulf Coast, that was the collection of beach communities that was impacted by the Deepwater Horizon crisis, um, we did our research and, and one of the things that we learned was that what was going to get people to return, what was gonna make, it, make them feel like it was safe to return to the beaches was visual evidence that the beaches were clean. They wanted to see people actually enjoying the beaches before they made their decision, decision to spend money to travel. So our you know, strategy was basically to give them a website where every single day we gave them a visual of one of the beaches. And it was, a lot of times it was video or photo and it was showing people enjoying the beaches and it was being upfront and transparent with them to say, this is the status today. This is what we're experiencing here. And that transparency and that honesty uh, led to people having trust in us um, and having that visual verification to say, okay, we're going to go ahead and, and make that effort to visit with you again. Um, it's important for consumers to see that you're doing the right thing. Uh, a big part of that marketing strategy in Orange County right now is providing visual evidence of businesses that are doing the right thing and working with businesses to show their customers doing the right thing. So highlighting customers who are wearing their masks, businesses that are asking people to do that, who are enforcing social distancing. Um, it's, you know, kind of, we know that media and anti-social media are going to focus on those of us who are doing the wrong thing. We know that that's going to happen. So part of the job now is to also communicate visually with people to say, here's those of us who are following the rules and doing the right things to keep you safe. 
it, it we're all going to have to be more nimble right now than ever. Uh, and if you have not already done a complete analysis of your website or social media, you're already behind the eight ball. Um, consumers are very quick to criticize right now, but they're also going to be quick to provide validation uh, for you also. Um, and smart businesses are going to invest in monitoring and they're going to monitor what's being said about them, what's being said about their competitors, uh, about their industry, so that they can react very quickly. Uh, that's, that's part of what we're doing for several, several of our clients right now. We're monitoring the landscape. We're analyzing what's being said about them, about their competitors, so that we can develop strategies for them on how to communicate very quickly and maybe make uh, quick changes and adapt the marketing plan. Uh, people expect immediate feedback, especially in a crisis. And when it comes to your social media, uh, if somebody is reaching out to you or about you, they expect you're going to respond very quickly. And you can't do that unless you're monitoring it, unless you're analyzing it, unless you're keeping a 24-hour watch on it, unfortunately. Um, and as part of that, you need to dis demonstrate leadership um, and request the same of your customers or you're going to be called out and, and it's hard to recover from that. Uh, I think we've seen that, um, you know, here in our local market, we've seen that with some businesses that have been called out on social media for not following the rules and it's become very difficult for them to respond um, and adapt now because that's out there and it's growing exponentially. So that brings us back to, to rule number one, uh, and you know it, it all starts with our employees. Your, your employees need to know that you have their back, uh, that you appreciate and value them as human beings, uh, not just as resources. Uh, that's especially true for those businesses that have millennial employees who have not experienced working through a recession. Um, they have not had a major economic disruption before. This is all new to them. Um, you need to take the time to thank them and remind them of their importance to you in the business. Um, you know, it, it, it was, uh, I was reminded the other day uh, by a member of my team uh, who, who basically asked, how often am I, as the owner of the company, picking up the phone and just checking in on employees to ask how they're doing? Uh, that goes a long way in terms of just showing that you care and also giving you the opportunity to say thank you. Uh, retention is critical right now, not just customer retention, but employee retention as well. Um, your clients should be reminded as often as possible how important they are to you. Um, and so that is a, saying thanks is a good place for me to stop and say thank you as well. Um, thank you for participating and listening, and I guess, uh, Nancy, open it up to questions that we may have. Uh, yes, um, I, I told people to type in, I'm hearing the echo now, it's probably me. Um, I hope people uh, told people to type into the um, chat box, but if you want to unmute yourself, if you have a direct question that you'd like to ask Dan, you did get from Nikki um, an excellent presentation, and she appreciated. <laughs> <Can't believe. laughs> yeah, well, just she just left a few minutes ago, so yeah. uh, only like eight minutes ago. But um, yeah, and great information and topic, and they certainly appreciated your message. Um, anybody want to unmute and sh ask any questions? Everybody's good. I, I apologize if I ran through very quickly, but I know that. Uh, Everybody has jobs to do right now and uh, wanted to be respectful of your time. Well, thank you very much, Dan, for um, coming on today. That was great information. I think, um, you know, definitely timely as we're all trying to, you know, we pivot one way and then things change again and we're having to pivot again. And I think um, being flexible and, you know, really looking at our businesses and taking the time to, uh, you know, make decisions and get input from our customers. So if you, anybody on has um, 
any input you want to send to the chambers, you know we are here for you. So you've got my cell number, you can text me, you can email us, you can call us. Uh, we're here, we definitely wanna hear from you and your input if there's anything that we can do for you or if there's a topic you want us to cover because you know we do a number of chamber chats because we're having an entire week of the disaster recovery we do not have a specific chamber chat this week or this month but from march 17th to may 19th we brought 15 chamber chats so uh, beverly actually said to me she misses them um but we do have an entire week this this month so we'll be bringing them back in august but if there's any topic that you want us to cover please let us know we want to make sure that we're not wasting your time and you are finding these um very informative uh, another reminder that um, August the 5th is our monthly luncheon um, sponsored by everythingbrevard.com. So we appreciate Tracy Stroddard for that. And Dr. Mullins, our superintendent of Brevard Public Schools, will be our speaker next month. So grab um, the information from our Facebook page, from our website of our upcoming events, and uh, join us for our next multicultural happy hour. Those are always fun if you have not been on those. It's just a nice way to chat and connect and somebody usually breaks out into music or song or uh, you know there's something going on and uh, we certainly appreciate all you our members joining us and um, participating so I will say goodbye until next month and once again thank Dan for his fabulous presentation uh, Curly in, in PIN it was is a fabulous company and if you did not get their contact information we will make sure we get that into um, on our Facebook page so you're able to reach out to them so thank you so much everybody and have a wonderful and safe 4th of July. Watch those backyard fireworks. Don't shoot them at anybody and just be safe. Um, and uh, we'll connect with everybody um, soon, I hope. So be safe. Thank you all. Bye.